In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God. Amen. Christ is risen. Truly is risen. God bless you. How would you like to see an angel? How would you like to see a miracle? Right? The women who, uh, and those with them, it says, and those with them, and we assume that the, some of those that were with them was Joseph of Arimathea and Nicodemus, because in John's Gospel, it tells us that they brought spices. So uh, that's why we uh, you have to read all the Gospels to figure out who they're talking about, but there's about eight women named, and uh, Joseph of Arimathea and Nicodemus. By the way, one of those women is Mary, but she's not identified as Mary, the mother of Jesus. She's identified as Mary, the mother of James and Josie, who were her uh, husband's children. Why? Because the Jews were trying to kill Jesus, and they were trying to, the, the disciples were afraid that they were going to be killed. And so in order to protect Mary, they didn't identify, because remember, Mary in those days was an extremely common name. It was Miriam, Moses' sister Miriam, right? It was an extremely common name among the Jews, and that's why they were always identified as Mary Magdalene, Mary the sister of Martha, Mary this, Mary that, so that we could identify which Mary. It was a very common name. And so instead of identifying her as Mary the mother of Jesus, they identify her as Mary the mother of James and Josie, uh, the sons of her um, stepfather, her, her um, husband. Nowadays, we tend to think that faith is the means by which we uh, accomplish great things in God. Uh, that you have to believe. You have to believe. You not only have to believe correctly, that is, believe the Orthodox faith, but you have to sort of believe intensely. But I want to tell you today that faith is not the most important thing. In fact, St. Paul puts it this way, that when we, uh, all the gifts of the Holy Spirit, right, prophecy, speaking in tongues, miracles, all the things, all the great things that people could experience from God are going to pass away. The three things that will remain are faith, hope, and love. And of those three, St. Paul says, the greatest is love. And here with this story about the myrrh-bearing women, we see an example of that. Tell me, did the myrrh-bearing women have faith? Jesus told them three times before the cross that he was going to rise from the dead. And here they are coming to the tomb with no faith whatsoever. Right? They're, they don't believe he's going to rise from the dead. Do they have hope? Are they, are they full of hope that he's going to raise? There's no hope. Hope is completely gone. No faith. But what do they have? They have love. You know, one of the reasons why the church honors burying the dead and treating the dead respectfully so much is because it's one of the only ways you can love somebody and they can't pay you back. It's a pure act of devotion and love to care for the dead. And these women loved Jesus. And it was their love that brought them to the tomb early in the morning. 
And it was their love, not their faith, that caused them to see angels and to see the stone rolled away from the tomb and to hear from the angel, he's not here, he's risen. It was love that made these women the apostles to the apostles. That's what the church calls them. The apostles to the apostles. Because they were sent by the angel. That's what the word apostle means, one who is sent. Right? Love is greater even than faith. Does that mean faith is therefore not important? No, faith is very important. We, we need to believe the right things. We need to believe them as much as we can with all our heart. But even when faith fails, right, the greatest of these is love. <clears throat> Love's kind of a funny word in English because we'll say things like, I love pizza. Do you guys love pizza? Right? I love pizza, right? I love bowling. I love my dog. I love my wife, right? It's kind of icky that you say those two things together. But we do. We, say, we, we use language like that, right? I love Jesus. I love God. We use the same word to refer to lots of different um, degrees of feeling, right? But the kind of love that endures forever is the kind of love, you know, I love my dog because I got a great dog. I like my dog. I really do, right? She's there. She's happy when I come home. She wants me to pet her. She wants to hang out with me. She doesn't tell me that I need to go take a shower. She's, uh, you know, she's just, uh, she's just there. She likes me. She doesn't judge me or criticize me. She just is there, right? But, you know, if my dog were to, I don't know, suddenly get rabies or something and become very aggressive, and every time I came near her, she would try to bite me, it would, I, I wouldn't... I wouldn't love her anymore. That, that kind of love where you say you love your dog or your cat or whatever, that's, it's a, we can call it love, that's fine, but it's not the kind of love that endures forever. What's the kind of love that endures forever? The love that endures forever is the love you show even when you don't get anything in return. When I love even when I don't get anything back, right? So often, uh, if you listen to popular, which I don't recommend, uh, but if you, were, if you do listen to popular music and listen to love songs, one of the things you'll notice is there'll be songs about love but they'll almost always say something like this, I love you because of the way you make me feel. Right? I feel this certain way when I'm with you, so I love you. This is not the kind of love that endures forever. Because what happens when you don't feel that way anymore? What happens when the feelings change? Right? But what real love, the love that endures forever, is the love that continues to love even when you don't get that nice feeling, that fuzzy, warm, lovey feeling. And yet you continue to love. That's the love that lasts forever. It's the love that the women had for Jesus, even though they couldn't get anything back from him, right? That's the love that endures forever. Yes, it is. And so, um, you know, how do we get there? It's something we have to grow into. You know, we're, we're all growing. Uh, uh, I love 
to watch couples who are young and in love and getting married and you know they're just so goo goo eyed at each other and they're just so happy and it's just so wonderful and you know you imagine that that it's going to be like that for the next 70 years of my life i'm just going to have this lovely googly goo, you know just warm sticky feeling every time i'm around this person and and then and then the the wedding and then the marriage starts and one of the things that happens in marriage is affection is given the opportunity to become agape affection is given the opportunity to become love because the gushy feelings don't last oh you know they may come and visit every now and then maybe less often maybe more often but what saves us in marriage is that we continue to love right that the affection turns into agape yes i'm 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 sorry i i make a mess here and it's that agape it's that love that endures forever and it's that love that the scripture teaches us is even greater than faith and hope in the name of the father and the son and the holy spirit